Hello everyone, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to memorize more things faster for your science classes. Now in this video, I'm gonna be using science-specific examples, but you really could take some of these memorization techniques and apply them to any of your subject areas. Now we all know that there's more to science than just rote memorization. You have to be good at a lot of different skills and critical thinking and analysis in order to be a strong scientist, science student, medical student, whatever. But you also probably know that you're not gonna get through your science classes without a little bit of memorization that'll be necessary. Especially when you get to those upper levels, memorizing things like organic compound structures and reactions are going to be really integral to your success in science programs. So the more you can memorize at a faster rate, the better off you'll be for your science courses. Now to start, I just want to review a couple good studying strategies before we get into our actual memorization techniques. Remember that this can't all be done in one night. You want to space it out using different studying segments and spacing out your time that you're reviewing. You also want to make sure that you're trying things like retrieval practice, not just rereading your information, quizzing yourself frequently and interleaving, making sure you're connecting your ideas to other topics so that you will remember it better. Of course, a lot of this can be done with things like flashcards, practice quizzes, quizzing your friends, and a really good study practice is to make sure you understand the material along with the things that you're memorizing, and that'll help you remember it better. All right, so let's say you're in a rush and you just want to get to the memorization tactics. First up is mnemonics. Now you've probably heard of these before at some point in your science career. Usually these are formed to something where the first letter of a sentence is going to correspond to the things in a list that you need to memorize. So for example, Dear King Philip came over for ginger snaps, which corresponds to the levels of classification that you probably learned in your high school biology class. Domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Now you can use whatever words you want in order to remember these lists of things. It doesn't matter what they are. And there's a lot of great ones out there already. You can also use acronyms like CHNOPS, C-H-N-O-P-S, to help you remember the six main chemical elements that make up all living things on earth. I remember in elementary school, we all learned my very educated mother just served us nine pizzas for the order of the planets, but that one no longer applies since we don't have Pluto in that list anymore. This can apply to really any process or list that you have. Another one I really like that I've heard of before is going crazy, crazy with a K, can offer purpose. This stands for the main steps in cellular respiration, glycolysis, Krebs cycle, oxidative phosphorylation. Whatever mnemonic you make up, make sure you use it frequently and share it with other people so that you're more likely to remember it on the day of your test or whenever you have to use that information. Next up, one of my favorites is called a memory palace. Now this is more of an imagination visualization technique, but it's what a lot of memory experts and competitive memory champions use to remember long lists of seemingly unrelated information. Now you can use memory palace for things that are related, but it's really helpful if it's something that you're not quite familiar with. So for example, you can use a memory palace to remember the different levels of protein folding and how that works. Think of yourself in a house or a store with four different levels. On our first level, which corresponds to the primary structure of protein folding, they're only gonna sell acids behind a chain linked fence. So that's gonna correspond to our chains of amino acids or the order of amino acids that make up the primary protein structure. We go up a spiral staircase to the next level, and that's gonna help us remember the secondary protein structure, which involves alpha helices. And on the second level of the store, they sell pleated sheets, which is gonna help us remember the beta pleated sheet structure in our secondary level of protein folding. We go up another level, the third floor, this is our tertiary structure. And here it's a 3D VR studio, which helps us remember the actual 3D structure of the protein. And this is when we have our side chains actually interacting. And then we go up to the fourth floor, which is our quaternary structure. And we can imagine maybe someone's making different balloon animal structures and putting them together to make crazy shapes. And this will be when we have more than one amino acid chain combining together to make a larger protein complex. Now that might be a little weird for you, but you can use memory palaces or something similar to this to really memorize any list of things. I used a memory palace once to help me remember over 300 digits of pi and associating each number with a shape or a story in my head. Our next memorization technique is word associations. So you can do this by just paying attention to what the word means and where it comes from and helping you remember that term better. For example, dehydration and synthesis. Synthesis just means making, like in protein synthesis, dehydration, water leaving or water coming out. And dehydration synthesis is the formation of polymers by losing one molecule of water. Now that one might be a little easy, especially if you understand what each of those separate words mean. But you can also use this with totally unrelated concepts that have nothing to do with the etymology of a word. For example, if you're trying to remember the difference between cations and anions, I like to imagine a happy little positive fluffy cat. <coughs> because a cation has more protons and electrons and gives it a net positive charge. Then I like to imagine a really grumpy mean girl named Anne, and she's negative. 
which helps me remember anions. Our next memorization technique is going to be poems, raps, or songs. These are things that you can put together to help you remember processes or lists of things, especially if you're having a hard time remembering the steps or an order of something. You can also use this technique if you're trying to remember definitions for words or any sort of longer process. It may take a little time to put together your own rhyming song, but once you have it in your head and sing it a few times, it's really easy to remember. You can also just Google or search on YouTube for songs that correlate with the topic you're trying to study. I know there's a lot of photosynthesis and mitosis songs out there, which may help you remember the steps of those processes even better. That's it for my list of really fast and effective memorization techniques. What memorization techniques have you tried that are effective for your studies? Let me know in the comments below and make sure to give this video a like if it's been helpful. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you later.